Hi guys, today we are looking at the attribute parser hacker rank challenge. I, I did it in C++. You can see with this message here that I just completed it. Uh, one of my subscribers asked me to do that next. So this is what I'm recording today. Uh, first, before I begin, uh, let me switch my view to full screen. You can see I just passed all the tests. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire code and explain exactly what it does. It's a bit long. But if you guys want to follow along, I just posted a gist, but this is the full code that I'm going to walk you through in this challenge. So um, it's all happening in uh, two sets of loops and we're going to see how it's done. All right. So um, I, I think you guys might have gone through the instructions by yourself. I'm not going to uh, waste too much time. So uh, let's move straight into the inputs. What we're going to do in this challenge is we're going to receive a set of um, a set of codes. Uh, we're calling it HRML, very similar to HTML, and then a set of queries. So in this case, we are receiving uh, four lines of code. So you see the first input here is four, and the second one is three because we are having three queries here. So um, the code has uh, it's it's made up of tags, opening tags. So these are two opening tags. These are two closing tags. This is the tag name, tag one, tag two. And then tag one has an attribute called value equals hello world. So hello world is the value in between um, double quotation marks. And then uh, tag two has an attribute called name. And the, uh, the value for that is name one, also between uh, quotation marks. And then to close the tags is just like um, um, HTML. But then to access the uh, values of the attributes uh, in these tags, then you have to use uh, the tilde. So for instance, if you want to access the name uh, for um, tag one, uh, that does not exist, okay? So for the outputs, our program needs to output not found. If you want to access uh, the value attributes for um, tag one, so value here is actually the name of the attributes, and the, the value for that attribute is hello world. So when the user writes tag one, which is the name of the tag, tilde value, value is the attribute name, we need to return hello world because that's the value stored here. And um, if the user wants to access a nested elements, then they have to use the dot notation. So in this case, tag one, which is this one here, dot tag two, tag two is nested inside of tag one, you can see a tag one is closed afterwards. So it's nested. And then you use tilde to access the name. In this case, it's name one. So we have to output name one. I'm going to scroll down a bit. And first, make sure that you guys have these four header files. So I use stream to handle the input outputs. Map. A map is for this right here. We're going to store the attribute names and attribute values in a map that I'm calling M. So you want to have S stream as well, because uh, inside of our code, we, we're going to want to parse these lines of text, and you will see exactly why. And you also uh, want to have string, not C strings, but rather C++ strings. So when this program begins, at first, uh, we want to have two integers, N and Q. So this stands for uh, the number of um, HRML lines. So for instance, four, and then Q would be for the queries. And then we want to have a string called uh, currents. I named it cur for currents, currents tag. And we're going to use as we parse our code to track which tag are we at right now. Like, is it a parent tag? Is it a child tag? And which one, etc. You will see why. And then we want to have an attribute name. Also, um, I'm declaring these strings at the top because I want to access them throughout my program. And uh, so what we're going to do first is capture the number of uh, HRML lines and then the number of queries. Then we write C in ignore to remove the next line character. And then we begin our loop. So the loop right here, we are dealing with these four lines in this exact um, example. So we create a string called line, another string called tag, and another string called extract. What we do first is we get the full line here. So for instance, tag one value equals hello world. That's one full line. We want to capture that. And we store it into the variable called line. Then we pass that to a, a string stream object, SS. And we are now going to be able to loop through that, uh, that string using SS. 
And notice that here I have three arguments. So the first one is the, the stream objects, SS. The second one is the variable, the string variable in which we are going to store the tokens that we extract from the string. And then the third argument is this. So it's a space. And this space here is our delimiter, meaning that whenever we are extracting tokens, anytime we meet the delimiter, we know that we, we need to switch to another token in the next iteration. So for instance, at first, it's going to extract this, the open angle brackets tag one. That will be the, our first token that we extract. Then it's going to see this space. So it's going to skip it because we've set this space as our delimiter. And then at the next iteration, it's going to capture value. Then it's going to see this space, it's going to skip it, and so on. You get the idea. So whenever we capture a token, so for instance, this one or this one or whatever, we want to check, did we capture a tag? So a tag would be something like this. Open angle, tag one. Open angle, tag two. Open angle, slash, tag two, and so on. So if there is an opening bracket at first, if the first character in the string that we, we get is an open angle bracket, we know it's a tag. But what type of tag is it? Is it an opening tag? Is it a closing tag? So for that, we need to check if the second character is not a forward slash, then we know we are dealing with an, an opening tag. So it's either this or this, tag one or tag two. Now we want to clean our, our tag. And for that, we can use um, this sub str uh, method. And uh, this, you, you can see here, we are passing the index one. So what we're going to get is remove or clear out that open angle brackets. And we're going to store, we're going to grab everything else until the end. So from this, like index one, T is index one in that uh, string token here, right? This, let's say this is a string token, T is at index one. So we grab everything from here until the end. So this is now our tag. We could actually move on and process our, our tag and so on, but we need to take care of specific cases, which we're going to encounter when we submit our code. And when we submit our code, we're going to, uh, we're going to deal with some tags like this. A, for instance, or something like this. Uh, tag. Let me see. Let me type tag five. Okay. So notice here, these are opening tags. It's all good, but they don't have any attributes. So if they don't have any attributes, our delimiter has no job to do here, meaning that we're going to grab the full thing, including the closing angle or the closed angle brackets here and also here. We want to make sure we avoid that. And that's why we check for tags that don't have any attributes. We want to um, check if the last character in that string token is a closed angle bracket. If it is, we want to remove that with pop back. Now we proceed and then we check. Um, I think before I, I explain that if statement, I need to explain the else first. So once we are done processing it, right, we will, be, we will only have this, like tag one, for instance. We want to set the current string to, um, to tag one, in this case, like this, or it can be tag two. So we know now we are at tag two in our code. But as we progress, uh, we're going to want to check, do we have to nest anything? So at first, this is tag one, this is the parent element, right? Tag one is the parent element, then tag two is the nested element. So as we store tag one in the first iteration of our while loop here, as our next iteration, iteration two, current, this car string variable is gonna have the value of tag one. So if we encounter another tag, right, we are the next iteration, so we are dealing with the next opening tag, we want to check, does current have any value? If it doesn't, we want to nest the tag we are at right now using the does notation. So after, after running this command here, let's say current first iteration, first iteration current was equal to uh, this, right? At the second iteration, then we're going to have something like this current equals tag one, dot tag two, right? And this matches uh, the queries here, right? Tag one dot tag two. So this is what we're dealing, uh, this is what we're doing with that uh, line of code here. All right, now what happens if it's a uh, closing tag? 
before I proceed, if you see these type of lines here, um, I was thinking of removing them. I might remove them eventually. I think I did not add them to my gist because I want to keep it clean. But basically, you guys can have these um, these lines of code just to check what you are getting at different stages of your program. Okay, so now for closing tags, let's see we reach here. Now, this we are, we are dealing with a line like this one here. We want to extract only this tag two, so we need to clean it. And for that, we remove this here, this uh, open angle and the forward slash. That's why you see the number two here. And then we extract until the end. So the length of what we want to extract is, is this right here. So eventually, after running this command here, the closed angle bracket is also going to get removed. So these three characters are going to get removed. We're going to be left with only the name of the tag. Now, um, we want to check uh, what do we have to clear from our, our, current, uh, our current string. First, we're going to check if the current tag we're dealing with is actually nested. So like I said, if, for instance, if current is actually equal to tag one dot tag two, something like that. And currently we are at tag two. We want to check, can we find this, all right, inside of our current uh, string variable? If we can, then we want to remove that. So this position is going to give us the position at which we can find this in the original string. And then we want to remove that. So we'll be left only with that. So uh, I hope this is clear to you guys. You can always play around with that code because I've provided it anyway. Uh, but I'm going to move on with my explanation. So if we did not find it, that means that we are probably not dealing with any nesting. And in that case, we can clear the cur uh, variable completely. So now uh, let's deal with attributes. So I'm first going to deal with attribute values. And what I'm going to check is First of all, let me collapse that part of my code because we are done willing with uh, the tags now, the tag names, opening and closing and stuff like that. So now else if, this was the first if statement. We were checking if we're dealing with tags. Now we want to check if we're dealing with attribute values. So else if, the first character of the token that we get is a double quote, then we know we are dealing with a value. And in that case, we want to extract whatever is between the, uh, the quotation mark. We need to find the last quotation mark in our token and only maintain what is in between the first one and the last one. So we can use find last of. You can read more about that here on c++.com. I'm gonna skip that because that video is not specifically about that, but I just want to let you guys know that um, there is actually some resources on that online. So we use find last of, we get that position and then we only keep this using the sub str method again. So I'm going to clear this C out comments. And now that we have this, we can add our value to our map. So remember that attribute name, which is that string at the top here, is, is valid because we can access it in that part of our program. We don't have any scope issues. But you might be wondering, what is the actual value of attribute name? Well, when we are parsing our um, HRML lines, the attribute name is always going to get parsed before the attribute values because they, they come first in our, in our lines, right? We are dealing with this full line and then we parse it using our SS or string stream objects. So eventually, whenever we, we, uh, we reach a token that does not begin with an opening angle, meaning it's on a tag, it does not begin with a quotation mark, meaning it's not an attribute value, then definitely it's either an equal sign or an attribute name. So in that case, in that S part of our code here, we check if the token is not a um, an equal sign, then it's definitely an attribute name. And in that case, we can say that attribute name equals the current tag we are dealing with. So at that line, current will be tag one. At that line, current will be tag one dot tag two. So we want to have that plus the tilde sign and the, the uh, value for the attribute name. And the reason why we're doing that is because when we are querying later on in our program, we're going to use something like this. So for instance, like I said, tag one dot tag two, that will be the value for cur here. And then we use the tilde. So you can see the tilde here again. 
and then the name of the uh, attribute. So in that case, tag two has an attribute called name, and that's what we have here as well. All right, so now we are pretty good with uh, how we are dealing with, um, you know, parsing these lines, right? So we can we can deal with tags, attribute names, and attribute values. Uh, so let's deal with the queries now. You can see that I'm having another loop. First of all, I'm having a, a string variable called query that I'm going to use in my loop. And now I'm looping through uh, the queries. So we, we're going to loop three times because Q already has a value of three right here for this specific example. So let me scroll down here. And now we can um, search in the map for that full uh, that full string. Because if you check here again, I just explained that, but I just want you guys to really understand. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, right. Attribute name, like I said, is gonna be equal to that full thing here because we've added the tilde and the name of the attribute. So we just have to pass that right, right here. We just have to pass that to our find method here. We wanna find in our map if we have that key. If we do, then we're gonna output the, uh, the attribute value. If we don't, then we're going to output not found. Now, if you are wondering again, um, how is the value connected to the attribute name? Well, earlier on right here in that part of our program, I said uh, we, are, we are assigning the attribute value to the attribute name in our map. So that's why it's gonna match. So if we don't find it, then we output not found. So that's pretty much it for our code. I'm gonna run it again. It should work fine. Now I'm gonna submit it. And I believe everything should also work fine, but just wanna make sure. And yep, that's it, we passed. Again, uh, make sure you guys grab this gist right here that I'm gonna put in the description of this video. Um, I think, yeah, you can give it a star. Do give it a star just to motivate me to keep posting more. Uh, subscribe to this channel, like this video. Uh, leave your comments, share it, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.